guys. How y'all doing tonight? So, um, I'm going to try my hand at something a little tough. I'm always behind the times, so uh, that's kind of like standard. This time I'm only a month behind, so, so, so bear with me a little bit. Barbie and Ken, back together. Are <laughs> so happy about this? Do, do we all know the backstory? Um, no. Okay, so Barbie and Ken broke up a while ago. Uh, and, and she, I know, I know, really. She started seeing this uh, Australian dude, this like surfer guy, and that, I don't know, that kind of upsets me, really, <laughs> honestly. Just because, you know, they start together for a long time, and all of a sudden this flaky-ass beach bum comes along with his <laughs> fluffy hair and his accent and steals Ken's fucking girlfriend, man. And my friend and I had an argument about this, because she was kind of like, well, Barbie's been like a thousand things, or whatever, and Ken's only been like five or six. So, you know, she kind of thought that that was a big deal, but I don't know. Like, how does that really look to a prospective employer? Like, when you're looking at someone's resume, it's like, maybe it's diverse, but it's like, how? okay, Barbie, you know, you obviously had a lot of job experience or whatever, but, um, you know, how do we know you're not just going to ditch this Wall Street thing and go start a pony farm next week? <laughs> it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. you got to stick with something. And that's the big deal. It's like, okay, maybe Ken's only been five or six things, but he's stuck with them as a commitment. That's what that means. That's what Barbie needs in a man. I don't know. Like, what do we think? Now, when I think about Barbie on the single scene, it kind of bothers me. Like, I don't know. Like, do we see Barbie as down to earth, high maintenance, party girl? <laughs> definitely. Definitely. I, I, I don't know. Like, Show of hands, show of hands, down to earth? No. no. High maintenance? Yeah. Yes. Party girl? Yeah. yeah. Flexible. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I would really hate to think of Barbie as a party girl. I kind of think of her as a little bit more classy than that. I don't know. The whole drunk hookup scene is not very cool. Like. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm drunk, it takes me a couple tries to get my key in the door, so I don't need to be trying to figure out a vagina. Oh. <laughs> 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 but no, but seriously, seriously, like, oh, and it's kind of become an issue for me lately. Like, I recently joined Zeus. I don't know if anyone else. I'll admit to this in public. I will admit to this in public. I don't know. This had its ups and its downs or whatever. Um, I, I'm happy about some parts. I'm not so happy about other parts. The most of the thing that uh, pisses me off is what they call their scientific matching service. Because they'll send you these emails, which they scientifically match you to these people. What that is taught me is that science has no faith in my ability. <laughs> and I don't want to offend any ugly people. <laughs> Every time I open up one of these emails, it's just like, man, what kind of science are you guys using? <laughs> I mean, phrenology was a science for a while. Like, are you taking my perfectly shaped skull into account? No? Well, let me just hear back from you when you've heard from all the sciences. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't know. But, like, the point is, Barbie and Ken are back together. Love is in the air. That's important. I, and I, I kind of like to find a little love myself. I think I've got a lot going for me, man. Like, I, I jog, I do yoga, I work out, and I've been in jail. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a point. I don't know, like, I don't want to diss jail, but, you know. <laughs> Dr drugs are expensive in jail. So, you know, it's not a place you really want to be. <laughs> I've been to the drug tank before, so that's kind of enough to let me know that I really wouldn't like going to jail. Um, actually, what I've learned about the drug tank, uh, there's two things. One, people are in a bad mood there. <laughs> and when I try to organize a sing-along, they will not participate. Two, if I wake up naked, the first thing I should do is apologize. Because if they took my clothes and I don't know why, I probably deserve that. <laughs> I, I, I know myself. I have friends who get all self-righteous about this kind of shit. It's like, especially with the cops. I have rights, man. I have rights. <laughs> when did anyone in a uniform ever respond well to that? <laughs> Especially if, like, the cop is really out of line and being abusive and an asshole. Like, do you think that reminding them of your rights is gonna help the situation? <laughs> Seriously? Well, what do you think it's gonna say? Oh, 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 sorry. We apologize. Jim, no, Jim. No. <laughs> this guy has rights. We're just gonna have to find someone else to harass tonight. <laughs>
That's never gonna happen. <laughs> oh man. But uh, let me tell you a story about the second time I woke up naked in a cell. This was actually my least favorite time that this ever happened to me. Because <laughs> you go through your regular checklist, it's like, did I have any drugs on me? Did I wake up with any strange marks on me? Am I covered in blood? Is it mine? And this particular occasion, all the answers happen to be no. So I'm like, great. Just kind of huddled into a little ball on my cement slab and, and waited for, you know, the, the time to come for them to let me go. And um, the, the really shitty part was, you know, I, I, they, they, they open the cell door and they let me out and they take me up to the counter. There's this little counter you got to do the checkout thing or whatever. And I'm saying, they're like, sorry guys, like if I was a, a jerk last night, like I really apologize. Like, good big deal. And, and, and the guy at the counter kind of gives me a knowing little smile and he's like, yeah, here you go. And he gives me this package of clothes. Except the problem was that the clothes they gave me back were not mine. <laughs> and um, I'm kind of like, ha ha ha, it's really funny, but you know. My keys are in there and shit, like I really need, you know, my, my own stuff back. And the guy's like, oh no, this is what you had on when you came in. <laughs> Time to start asking some questions. <laughs> I was like, jubilant about this. And it was like not fun. It was, it was the worst walk of shame ever, because it wasn't even a walk of shame. It was like the shuffle of shame, because the shoes were like three sizes too big. And I, I had to like trek this, and I couldn't even go home. I had to go back to the place the party was and break in because everyone was passed out and get my own shit back and get my keys so I could go home and go to bed. It wasn't very much fun at all. And you can only do that a few times before people start asking some really serious questions. But, you know, like, I don't know. Maybe you're a kleptomaniac or an arsonist or whatever, or maybe you're just crazy in one of the really obvious ways, like you talk to yourself in public or see people as food. <laughs> you're going along, you're doing your thing, and then for no reason that you'll admit to, you find yourself in front of a judge. And the judge is saying that you need some kind of evaluation. And this is this is important. Because uh this is where uh, this all kicks in, what I would call, uh, you got to have your fake history. Your fake history is like the fortress of lies you build around your freedom. <laughs> and so when you show up in court, you really need to have all these stories about a sane, law-abiding person, and just pretend they're stories about you. It's not as hard as it sounds, really. Um, the trick that I find is to cry on the first day. Not about anything important. You don't want it to be like, you know, uh, you don't want any soap opera bullshit, you don't want any melodrama. You want to maybe just ask the guy for a glass of water and spill it, and then just cry like a nerd on prom night. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, he or she will think. Can't this guy pull it together for like five minutes and take a fucking drink of water? He or she will not think fucking because, you know, these people talk like kindergarten teachers. But <laughs> at, the, at the same time, uh, when, all you need is total sympathy, no empathy. You want to be a complete wreck, a quivering mass of human jelly that could not possibly withstand just like the day-to-day -day functions of life. And then, when that psychologist goes into court, they are on your side. Totally. Your Honor, I've spent some time with the defendant recently. He is a good man, but a weak man. <laughs> he was starved for affection for his entire life. Your Honor, the defendant didn't see people as food, he saw people as love. <laughs> Long story short, I think online dating could work for me. <laughs> Really? <laughs>